Hello again, everybody, and welcome to this week's MPTV Coaches Show. Ryan Lindley, Eric Myers, and we are going to talk about several things in this episode. Let's start, though, with football. I mean, a big win at Dunlap on Friday night. Potters are now 8-0. Yeah, 8-0. You can't, nothing to shake your head about right there. 8-0. Really good Dunlap team over there in Dunlap. Hostile environment. I wouldn't say the weather was the best. You know, low 50s, rain, mist. Definitely caught them a little bit off guard right on their home turf. Yeah, I think so. And obviously, the weather definitely played a factor in the game. Let's go ahead and look at some high highlights here and you'll kind of see as you watch this a little bit of a rainy night but a good day for the Potters as they get a 10-6 win. Potters and Dunlap we start on defense fourth and goal for the Eagles and Paul Weeks is at the point of attack turning the Eagles back for a goal line stand for the Potters. Now we go to the offensive side of the ball and what you'll see here is Jude Hart he's going to take this 73 yards all the way down to the other end of the field. He will be tackled and will set up a Potter's field goal. Cooper Scold, two for two on the year on field goals, gives the Potters a three to nothing lead. Special teams huge again for the Potters as they will set up their next score with a blocked punt. Brett Michael with the punt block. Trey Erickson catches it out of the air, gets it down to the six yard line where the Potters will score. Jude Hart rolls right, throws back left. GB Kruzik with the catch and the touchdown. He disappears from the screen, but I promise you folks, he scored. Potter's defense once again, Dunlap threatening, and guess what? Clint Teeter continues to make big plays every week. Here he has a huge fumble recovery, and then finally the Potters make one more defensive stand to hold on for the lead. It's fourth down for the Eagles. Going for it here, just past midfield. It'll be GB Kruzik flying in for the pass breakup, and the Potters win 10-6. As you can see right there, great win for us. Looks like it's almost a better night to go to a haunted house than it is to go to a high school football game. But uh, at the end of the day, Potters get that elusive 8-0 victory. I don't know. We've talked about this every week now. Did anybody think the Potters would be 8-0 going into this monumental game for the Middle Night Championship versus Washington this Friday? Yeah, I mean, I think it, the Potters are a surprise team. If you look at rankings, I mean, kind of feel like they're still, in a way, a surprise team. Number Ain't five. nobody giving us any Yeah, job. I mean, number five in the AP vote in Class 5A. Now, number five's not bad. I don't want to say it that way, but the reality of it is that there are teams ahead of the Potters with losses, so you're 8-0. You're looking up at, a te at teams with losses. At the same time, obviously, the nice thing about high school football is you do decide it on the field. So, the play we'll talk a little bit more about the playoffs later on, but but obviously, big game Friday night against Washington. Middle line at conference. Potters eight zero. Washington seven and one. And uh, probably, I don't. I mean, I don't know if it's fair to say possibly the biggest crowd in the history of Carper Field is expected. But a very large crowd is expected. Oh, so get there early, right? Freshman game is going to start at five. Uh, there's no school, so you could probably camp out there all day. I don't know. I mean, yeah, get a little, thing. Camp out for tickets, like <laughs> Coach K, I, Duke, could, like, going little, po little Potterville, like oh, you know, like, like the Shevskyville, you know. What would that be? O'Neill's O'Neill Town? I, I don't know. Town? Yeah, I don't know. Something but like that. We could have fun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Potter Palace. Oh, there oh, you go. There oh, we that's go. not bad. I like that. Potter Palace. But uh, big game. Yeah. So what are kind of the keys to the game, right? We had the rainy game last Friday versus Dunlap where we ran. We did a little bit of passing, but not that much. You know, Washington's going to bring in this very stout defense. You know, we talked about it off air. Is you're not going to be running the ball up the middle. Their defense has shut everybody down all year. Their offense, though, not the strongest, right? They like to do the run a lot. But uh, so what are our keys as a young yeah. I think game is going to be a defensive struggle. I mean, kind of just in general. I mean, I've said, we said it off the air. I've said it again. Like, it's a game that conceivably, I mean, last week was 10 to 6. So I guess there's like a huge shock to say that this game could be 14 to 10, 14 to 7. Like, two scores could win this game. I mean, keys, obviously... I think one huge key is the perimeter, right? I mean, Washington is really strong up front, and that's not to say they're not strong on the perimeter as well. But I think if you look at the Potters roster, a lot of really strong perimeter players, right? I mean, you've got good, solid receiving core. Sean DeBuffington is a guy that can run outside with good speed. Jude Hart is a quarterback, is, is comfortable on like the quarterback run where he keeps the ball and takes it around, around the tackle. Well, we saw some Wildcat Friday too, didn't we? I mean, ran the ball. yeah, essentially that's, that's really what it was, right? Is snap the ball right to Sean and yeah. let, let him work. So, I mean, I think perimeter is a huge factor. I, I would say this, if if the Potters are winning winning on the perimeter, if they're going, you know, if they're running outside, if they're throwing the tunnel screens outside and they're gaining five, eight, ten yards, I mean, Washington's a team you're not going to probably get the 80-yard run on. But if you're getting five, eight, ten on every play, then things are going well for the Potters. If Washington is shutting down the perimeter, that's a sign that things probably are not going as well. Well, we can hope that to it. You know, are we going to see any, like, reverse flea flicker action? Anything, <laughs> these new plays that are coming up? I mean, it's kind of funny, you know, you, you experiment 
every week with stuff as a coach. One thing that kind of makes it maybe a little harder against a team like this is they're so physical and they're so fast that you got to run stuff that hits quickly. Well, not only that, one mistake could cost you yeah. this game, yeah. and you don't want to do that. So, yeah. obviously, if you have nothing else to do, head out to Carper Field Friday night, 7.30 p.m., Warren versus Washington. It's also going to be on the NHS network. So you can check into the Mort Potters that way and uh, let's get us a win. So what else we got going on here? Yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the other sports. And then, like I said, we'll circle back to football playoffs and kind of talk about what might be happening at the end of the show. But let's talk about soccer first. So, um, speaking of playoffs, they yeah. played a playoff game. Potter, hosted at McClellan Park. Yeah, hosted at McClellan Park. 5-0 winners over the Limestone Rockets. And so they are going to play in a regional championship. Friday night, 5 p.m. out there. So it should be pretty good. So actually, let's just plug this right now. Yeah. You need a double dip, double That's header. A good point. Friday night, 5 p.m. at Cullen Park, and then just head down to Carpet Field, come out 7 30, yeah. watch the Potters roll hogs over those Panthers. Yeah. Panthers, championship. Potters, Panthers in both. So, both. Yeah. So, double I mean, dipping. I mean, you chance we need to, to win both. I say, chance for a sweep for the Potters. I guess a chance for a sweep for the Panthers, too, but I'm hoping the other way. So, the Potter, a Potters, like that. yeah. Potters sweep on Friday night, regional title in soccer, conference championship in football, make it a pretty good day for Potters Athletics. That would be a very awesome time. So, again, you know, Soccer Potters scored five goals. Got to keep that going. Got to keep that very good Washington team that they're going to play on Friday night. Yeah. So I think the key if we talk to you know Coach there would be score goals, yeah. right? Yeah. Offense is yeah. going to overcome it. Keep the offense rolling. That's yeah. what it comes down to. We've got volleyball starting as well. Yeah, volleyball also starting their postseason. They're at Limestone. I mean, they, they, they obviously will play the Rockets, hopefully, when they advance to the regional, cha- yeah, regional championship. But, I mean, obviously, volleyball season wrapped up with a lot of success. Had a great year in the middle line. I, they've, they've played and defeated the Rockets recently. So, I mean, I think volleyball is in a position, talking to some of the kids, you, we had the interview with Gracie Junis last week. Mm-hmm. I, I think they they feel like this is a sectional type team. So cross country, obviously, also another team that's excelling. Just had conference meet and did really well there. Yeah, I mean, last Friday, you know, we talked about being maybe better for Halloween, but still running out in the rain. Uh, Detweller Park there, you know, bring home first place on the boys' side. I think everybody finished in the top six, top seven. Uh, all the guys who finished in that top seven made all-team first conference. Girls walk away with second place. Another three girls get all-team first conference right there. Awesome job for a cross country team. Yeah, and it's just the beginning of bigger things, right? I mean, we've talked to Coach Zeller a couple times, been only once in this year's coaches show, and he'll be back soon, folks. If you're a big Joe Zeller fan, but I mean, he said in that in that initial interview, right, that they had big goals. This was kind of like step one on the goal of making it all the way to state and maybe bringing home that state trophy. You know, as we talked about, his coaches process, right? So step one, check mark. Let's yeah. you know go down path and let's get it happening. So uh, best of luck to our boys cross country team. Uh, also, just had a great finish to their season with swimming, right? Yeah, I mean, they continue to set school records. They're getting, they had senior night this past week, so now they're getting ready to roll into their postseason. Yeah. And, you know, you start to, to look at that and you realize that this has been a program that has been, I mean, at the top of their game this year, really, right? I mean, all. Seriously, right after their yeah. season last week at the Galesburg Invitational, brought them second place again right there. Yeah. So. Uh, hats off to our swimmers as they head on to their postseason as well. And then I think we should give a shout-out to Chloe Kendall, freshman, going to state for Potter's uh, tennis. Yeah. Kind of a first. So Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. And, you know, again, all the, we talked a lot about tennis a few weeks ago and the idea of, like, the excitement of doing the under the lights and all that. So it's really cool to see somebody advance and obviously represent the Potters at state. So talking about advancing, representing state. Talk me through some of this postseason bracketology. Let's just let's just focus on football because yeah. it by far is the most complicated. It is the most complicated because not everybody makes it, right? I mean, I think that's the biggest thing, right? You assume, well, you don't assume. You know, in every other sport, that you're get, you could have a terrible season, you still get into the postseason, right? In football, you have to get at least five wins to qualify for the postseason. Six makes it automatic. I mean, the nice thing is sitting here with eight. We're, we're feeling in. we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. We're definitely in, and now it's a matter of seeding. And so maybe that's the most complicated thing that we need to talk about. Is how do you seed in football? Because there are a couple different factors that go into it. Number one is overall record, right? So if you've got nine wins, you're going to be seeded ahead of every team with eight wins, right? If you have eight, you're going to be seeded ahead of every team with seven and so on. Where it also factors in, though, is there's what we call playoff points. And that is the total number of wins from your opponents. So if you're, let's just say, you're an eight-win team and your opponent's in total had 35 wins, you would be ahead of any eight-win team with 34 or less wins, but you'd be behind you'd be behind any eight-win team with 36 or more points. So it gets it's a little complicated. It gets a little complicated. Because you yeah. gotta go all the math. Yeah. It's math. I mean, yeah. We don't teach math, but <laughs> that's a lot of stuff happening right there. So we should be sitting in a pretty good spot right now. We're 8 0. We're gonna go 9 0. But uh, you know, the Muslim Muhammad Seymour teams, Rochelle. Yeah. 
those games really help us because those teams have rolled all season. Yeah, I think we're sitting right now with 38 total points, and that doesn't include the wins that Washington has because, I mean, whether I mean we're planning on winning, but whether we win or lose against Washington, that's going to get us above 40 points because they're going to have yeah. – they've got seven wins right now. Hopefully they stay at seven wins. But whether they have seven or eight at the end of the day Friday, we're going to we're going to have 45 or 46 points. So that will put us – Toward the top of either eight or nine win teams. Maybe not the absolute top. The other thing that's sitting out there is kind of one thing that's complicated with football is there are eight classes in football compared to three or four in almost every other sport. And those classes aren't locked in the way they are. Like for baseball, we always know we're a 3A school no matter what, right? Football, the classes can kind of shift based on who's got five wins, right? If you've got a lot of small schools with five wins, then those then the 1A group gets filled really fast. Some of those bigger, this is going to sound so like I'm using an oxymoron here, but some of those bigger small schools get moved up to 2A and so on and so forth. So Morris is a really large 4A school that could get moved into 5A where we are, and they have almost 50 total playoff points. So if they're in 5A, they most likely will be the number one overall seed. Well, that's good. So where do you think we fall? As you know, the Morton Potter sitting here right here. Here, eight no. What do you think you're going to? I mean, even with Morris obviously possibly being five A, I mean, I still think we're a top three seed. I, I think Barry is going to get us a home game. Right? We're just going to absolutely get us a home game Friday night. Yeah, yeah, should be Friday. I mean, we'll, we'll, the, there's also that that gets interesting. The postseason too. That might be a discussion for next week. Yeah. How we schedule whether the postseason games are on Friday or Saturday. But we should we, we will for sure have a, have a home game. We should be a top three seed. We're most likely playing a team that's like a five and four type team that just kind of sneaked into the playoffs. So. So we're in a position where you would expect to see a Morton team moving on to the second round of the postseason. Which is what we like to hear. Hopefully not just second round. We're just going to keep yeah, this train going. keep on rolling. rolling. Yeah. But first and foremost, right, we have to take care of business. Washington. Uh, Washington is going to be here 7.30 p.m. Carper Field. And if I just said, remember, we can do that whole double. Yeah, that's right. Double header. 5 p.m. McClellan Park. Morton plays Washington for the regional soccer. And then just head down to Carper Field. Hang it out right there. But if you can't make either one, they're going to both be on the NFHS network thanks to MPTV and those amazing crews that we have there. So any final thoughts, Coach? Again, I just want to echo what you said, right? Big, exciting Friday night, Morton-Washington rivalries in both soccer and football. If you can't make it out to Carper Field, watch it, but we'd love to see a huge crowd both McClellan Park at 5 and Carper Field at 7.30. So for Island and Merrick Myers, until next week, thank you.